Greetings all you grain fighting fam. It feels good to be back to tutorials after spending about three years developing the same course. And this first one is sponsored by Arnold Renderer, all about how to murder grain dead. Let me start by introducing you to the scene. We are flying through space across a lonely asteroid. And upon that lonely asteroid is a lonely little astro dude. Let me stop right there while he's waving, because that's a good frame to do a test render of. And while that's rendering, I'm going to flog the course in your face. The Process of Motion is a course for motion designers and 3D creatives. It will give you the tools you need to lead motion design projects and take on projects directly from clients in the comfort of your own home, which I hear is popular these days. We're most likely down to the last 100 spots on the course. If you want one, get it at processofmotion.com. And conveniently enough, that test frame just finished. And if we look at it, we see a quite slow, quite grainy scene. The complete opposite of what we want. And that's because there's quite a bit going on in the scene. We have the diffuse, we got some specular, and then we have the little dude who is shock full of subsurface scattering. And there's a bit of volume. And at the moment, all of that is full of grain. But before we can kill any of it, we must first find it. So let me introduce you to the main culprits and main solutions to any type of grain in your scene. And that is in the render settings, Arnold Renderer and Sampling. In here you find six different sampling values, starting with the camera AA, also known as the super sampler. And that one tells Arnold exactly how many rays to shoot out per pixel from your frame into the scene to go looking for light and color. And that's set to three at a moment. And you might think that means it shoots out three rays, but actually it subdivides the pixel three times. So actually it shoots out nine rays. And the reason it's called this super sampler is because it's also a multiplier for all the samples in your scene. So technically you could cure any kind of grain by just cranking that value, but you will end up rendering far beyond the inevitable heat death of the universe if you do. Okay, so the second one down is your diffuse, and that one controls the graininess of your indirect illumination. So that's your global illumination. Next one is the specular, and that controls the graininess of um, shiny areas, like the stomach of our dude here, who's reflecting a little bit of the um, asteroid. Transmission, next one down, is probably the only one I don't have in the scene, but it works the same way. It just controls the amount of grain in transparent objects. Then there's subsurface scattering, which of course our dude is full of. And finally, volume indirect, which controls the grain of the indirect illumination from volume. So one thing you might notice is that all of these values, with the exception of subsurface scattering, controls the grain of the indirect illumination in your scene. That's because your direct illumination samples live within your individual lights. So if I go into my environment and just click any old light I have there, you will see the samples value here, which controls the direct illumination in your scene. So that's your direct speculars, like on top of the head of the dude, as well as the graininess of your shadows. And a little bit further down, there's also the volume samples value, which controls the direct illumination of volume metrics in the scene. So obviously there's more than a few sample values you need to tweak to make sure your render is both grain free and as fast as possible. But I use a very simple and quick method to make sense of them all and to do them all in sequence. And step one in the method is always to set up the AOVs. So I'm going to search for and find AOVs for all the different rays I have in my scene to track down and kill that grain. And then I will go into the main here and turn down the camera AA, the super sampler, to one. And you'll notice that that makes the grain in our scene very horrible. And it also makes the scene render very quickly because that just makes it easier for us to see and get rid of. So that's step one of the hunter killer mission. Step two is to start with the lights and do them one by one. So I'll turn off all lights except for one. And then I will turn on something called Daniel's little helper, which is just a solid box, which is gonna capture some shadows in the scene. It looks like on the backside of the asteroid here, in the shadow specifically, there's a lot of grain. And then I will start cleaning that shit up. Starting with the main samples. And that, as I mentioned, controls the direct diffuse and direct specular. So I'm going to set my AOV to only show the direct diffuse 
And then I'm simply going to crank this value until the grain is either gone or just not noticeable. Because there's no such thing as grain free really, it's just a maximum amount of grain you can tolerate in a render. And right now at 8 samples, I can't really see the grain anymore, and I'm sure you can't either, not with the YouTube compression on top of that. So I'm going to increase the exposure of the light. And as you can see, there's still a bit of left in here, up in the shadows. I'm going to keep cranking that for a while. And I'm now up to 12 samples, and the whole thing is starting to slow down. So let me introduce you to a very good friend, the render region here. I'm just going to put that around a very high grain area, and just keep on cranking. Okay, so I'm at 20 samples now, and if I switch between 19 and 20, I can't really tell that it's getting cleaner. And basically, when you no longer notice that the grain is changing, you can consider that grain free. So that's the first value we have locked down. We know exactly what that needs to be for that light to not add any grain to the scene. Let's move on to the volume samples, and I need to shift this then to show the direct volume instead. And it looks like we found ourselves a bit more grain to kill. I'm going to start cranking this, but you will notice that after a point, you will still see quite a lot of grain, even though the values are going up. So even now at 8 and 9, I can't really tell the difference. So I'm going to set that to 8. But you can tell that there's a lot of grain still in the volumetrics here. And that's because volumetrics are semi-transparent things that are kind of hazy. So they are also controlled by the camera AA super sampler value. And the only way to get rid of that alpha grain in volumes is to increase that value. But since we're at a value with the volume samples where it's not getting notably better, we can be pretty confident that this light is no longer contributing to that grain. So this key light is now certified grain free. And I'm going to make a note of these values, 20 and 8, in a little note tag that I tend to have in my lights. It needs 20 regular light samples and 8 volume samples to be grain free. And then I'm going to turn that off and do the same to these other two lights. Alright, so now all of those lights are certified grain free. A couple of things worth noting is that the values we have them set to now are insanely high if this is final render. But we don't worry about that at this point. At this point, we're only worrying about getting it grain free. And once it's grain free, we can worry about getting it fast as well. But also, the second thing to note is that it's still very much grainy here. And that is because we need to sort out our other samples as well. And now that we've fixed the direct samples that are all on your lights, we can actually set those back to default when it comes to editing our indirect samples. If I switch to, for example, the indirect diffuse, you can see that there's a whole bunch of grain here. Even if I turn down all the samples on the lights back down to default, the indirect illumination grain is not affected at all, but the render is getting a bit quicker. And that's going to help us now that we're going to tweak these. Now I'm going to get on with the indirect diffuse. And to find the maximum amount of grain, it's always good to look in shady areas of your scene. And then I'm going to do the same for this value. I'm just going to crank it until the grain more or less disappears. It's going to come a point where I can't really tell if the grain is getting better or not. And I think I'm at that point right now. This indirect diffuse pass is looking pretty smooth to me. So then I'm going to go do the same with the specular pass. I'm going to set my OV to show the indirect specular and then find something in the scene with indirect specular. For example, our dude standing here. And I'm going to focus in impolitely on his little armpit here, because that looks like the grainiest area of his specular. And the better we can see the grain, the better we can kill it. And then I'm going to crank the specular value until that area is smooth as silk. Now I think that's smooth as well. So I'm going to move on, and I would have done transmission if I had anything that's transparent in the scene, but that works the same way and just crank it until it's clean. But next up is the subsurface scattering, which of course our dude is full of. So I'll set the SSS, AOV, and I can do the same here that I did with the lights and just turn down the diffuse and the specular to make it render quicker. And just remember that both of those need to be set to 10 to be grain free. And then just work on the subsurface scattering on its own. 
Subsurface scattering, like volume, is generally quite a tricky one. But I'm going to consider that to be grain free now, at least for the distances that we're going to be at. So we're just about ready to move on to speeding this dude up. But before we get there, I'm going to show you what volume indirect does. I don't have any of it in this scene because it's generally quite slow, but sometimes you do need it to get a certain type of effect. I'm going to swap to show only the volume indirect and actually go into ray depth and set volume indirect to anything other than zero. This is basically global illumination for volumes. You can see some of it right here in the IPR, but it's quite dark. So I'm going to go into my rock material and just crank the emission of that by about 10 times. And then you should be able to see both the volume indirect illumination and all the grain that comes with it. Normally that needs to be smooth. And to fix that, you would crank the volume indirect samples. And it does add a lot to the render times. But if we switch to beauty and show all the passes on this, you can tell that it doesn't really add much to the scene. If I set the rock back to have the emission I wanted at, instead of 12.5, which is a bit insane, you won't actually see much indirect illumination in the volume anyway, because there's so much else going on in the scene. Set that back to default and set the volume raise down to zero. And then I'm gonna set all of these values to the ones they need to be to be certified grain free, including the direct light samples on the individual lights. So this is our frame at the moment. I would say it is cleaner, definitely slower, but it isn't grain free yet. And that's when we have to start touching the super sampler. Because right now we know that all the grain in the scene comes from a lack of camera AA samples. All the other rays in the scene have been certified grain free. So the only thing we can do to get rid of the grain that we have is to turn up the camera AA samples. Now I did mention that it is a multiplier for all the samples in your scene. Because what happens is when it sends out diffuse samples, it splits every pixel 10 times multiplied with the super sample value, the camera AA value. If I was to set that to three, the amount of diffuse samples is 10 times 10 times three times three, which is 900. Because all sampling values in Arnold are per pixel and they are all squared because they are subdividing the pixels. So I'm gonna select a region where there's heavy grains and then I'm gonna start cranking the camera AA values. But now we need to reduce all the other samples in our scene just to make sure that it's not slower or more grain free than it absolutely needs to be. And that's easy enough. Since we doubled the camera AA value and that's a multiplier for all the other ones, we know that we need to divide all the other values in half. And then do the same for all the samples in our light. And if we do another test render now, we can see that it's a lot more grain free and a bit slower, but it's still not completely perfect. So we do need to turn up the camera AA values again, but this time it's not quite as easy because if I turn that one up to three now, I'm not doubling the value. So I can't simply divide all the other values in half. It's easy enough for the diffuse and specular because that one has this little guide box here, but the subsurface scattering and the light samples don't have that same luxury. But let's start with diffuse and specular. When I set that to three, the diffuse rays are 225. If I turn that down to four, it is closer to the 100 we need to have that certified grain free. And if I turn it down to three, it's slightly under, but I think I'm gonna leave it at three because that's slightly quicker and it's also closer to 100 than 144 is. And then do the same for the specular. But now when we get to the subsurface scattering, we don't have that guide to show us how much to turn it down by. But that's when I have a little equation for you. Because we know that for subsurface scattering, we need 196 rays per pixel for it to be certified grain free. And the equation I have is that the samples squared times the camera samples squared equals the total rays. So we know that the camera samples are three, and we know that the total rays are 196. And now we just need to solve for X 
to find out exactly what number we need to put in to the samples for subsurface scattering. And if you just search the World Wide Web for Equation Solver, you're going to find a website that can do this for you. Lord knows I did. And it told me that x in this case equals 4.6666666. So I'm going to set the subsurface scattering to 5. And then I'm going to go in and adjust these lights. And I can use the same equation there. Because the notes I have says that the key light needs a total of 400 samples per pixel to be certified grain free. In quick maths then tells me that x equals 6.66666. Boom! And I'm going to set that to 7. And then just do the same for the volume samples. And all the other lights. Now that I've gone through and done that with all the lights in my scene, we can finally go through and do another test render. And once again, we have a cleaner render, which really isn't much slower at all. But I still think I might need to turn up that camera A value by just one more, just to clean up his arm a final little bit. All right, now we have a really rather clean render. And you can see that this, compared to the original render we had, is many times cleaner without being that much slower. Now, if your render is still a little bit too slow for your liking, if you want some corners to cut, you should start by looking at individual lights. You can see if there's any of the lights that can exclude any object in the scene. For an example, my uh, bounce light here doesn't do much for the smoke. So I could simply take the bounce light and exclude the smoke from that. And that way I'm going to save quite a few volumetric light rays. If you want to cut even more corners, start looking at the individual samples on your lights. You should be able to turn some of those down and introduce a bit more grain in your scene without completely ruining the whole thing. Only as a very last resort should you start turning down the samples in your render settings. But I must admit that I've been known to do that more than a few times. Because it's not really about having it be completely grain free. It's about having the amount of grain you can get away with. So, to be a master assassin of grain in Arnold, step one is to set up your AOVs and set the super sampler to one. Step two is to clean up your direct rays in your lights. Step three, clean up the indirect rays. Finally, step four is to turn up the super sampler and do your quick maths. Boom! And then you should have the cleanest possible and fastest possible render in Arnold. Basically, ready to send off to a render farm, which is exactly what I'm going to show you how to do in the next tutorial. So big thanks to Arnold for sponsoring this video and rendering of the process of motion. And as always, thank you for your time. And until next time, stay in motion. Hi,